The iPhone 14 kind of sucks. Whoa. And uh, Whoa. Is that how you're starting the video? Every one of our commenters is just going to be like, <laughs> of course it is. It's an Apple product. Just get uh, something else that's Android. <laughs> Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4, perhaps? Oh, wait. Wait, Matt, are we twinning right now? <sighs> are we twinning with Z Flips? Twinning. We've been using the iPhone 14 Pro specifically you and me yeah for you know about a week now yeah um and we have thoughts let's and, talk about this yeah. from the perspective this is not a review uh youtube.com slash mkbhd exists as yeah. does Denki. both are great videos on the iphone 14 pro but i think for this video it's more just like what what our experiences have been. yeah 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 so in my opinion the iphone 13 pro was a terrific device. Mm -hmm. Terrific cameras, great display, 120 hertz, excellent battery life. There was really nothing wrong with the 13 Pro. You come to the 14 Pro and now we've said goodbye to the notch and hello to the dynamic island. We've got ourselves an always on display, which definitely drains battery. And we've got an upgraded camera system, which it's almost a side grade because like certain times, yes, it's better, but also certain times I feel like I've been having focus issues. Some of the color and the processing, I feel like is a little bit different because they've completely changed their back end to the photonic engine. It's a weird upgrade this year, I think. Let's start with the elephant in the room, the dynamic island, or should I call it the dull lamic? Island. What? You cannot say the dull Namek Island. Dull Namek Island. Hit me. Why don't you like the dull Namek Island? So I want to be very clear that when they showed off the island in the, you know, the keynote, whatever we're calling it these days. The event. The event. Yeah. The event. I do fully believe that the way that they've integrated this is the best way to integrate like a notch, a hole sure. punch, anything. A couple other Chinese brands have already immediately started copying it. It looks really good on no matter kind of where yeah. it is. But the implication has been really weird to me because, okay, sure, like uh, music works great on it. But you know what's dumb? What's that? Notifications don't use it. Well, like notifications yeah. still bounce down below the island. There's a wasted line of pixels when yeah. you get a notification. So now where the notch was, it's a good like quarter of the screen which is then taken up by between the notification yeah. the dynamic island and then this like the kind of no man's land that's above the island why would notifications not expand out from that like every other I think thing it else? might just be because the dynamic island like the parts that they can't work around which is the the whole punch and sure. the little pill that's square in the middle so if if you want to put like uh, notification text up there you would have to like put it off to the side or something my thought is that the dynamic island this is very much the version 1.0 like they've yeah. got like a very solid like core my bet is that next year when we see iOS 17, the dynamic island will turn into a dynamic tropical paradise. And so like, all right, we've talked about this a lot and I'll, I'll just kind of give you my thoughts again on, I know full well why Apple is going with the pill versus like a hole punch, whatever. Because when you have like a silhouette of a phone, like an icon, you can immediately look and say, that's an iPhone. If you have like the, the hole punch, it's like, yeah. oh, is that a Samsung? Is that a Xiaomi? Is that a is whatever? Is that a Z Flip 4 in your pocket? It, you can't, you, like the silhouette, you can't tell. And that's purely a branding thing. It has nothing to do, it, like that is fully form over function. And that's kind of what Apple's all about. That's like why they introduced, I think, the notch to like the MacBook Pro. Like I guarantee we're gonna see the island in MacBooks in the, in the next refresh. I would not be wildly surprised. Like yeah. it's, it's, that's, they wanna keep things to sync, whatever. Yeah. Cool, great, whatever. whatever. However, the notch like was because it was so static, you just forgot that it was there within seconds of using it, but you are very aware that the the uh, dynamic island is there. You know, we shoot in 16 by nine. People ask constantly, can we please go into like 18, uh, 18 uh, by nine aspect ratios? We used to do that, but then it was like really annoying production wise. So we went back to 16 by nine yep. and like all the content I consume is 16 by nine. You know, when you have a phone that is not a 16 by nine phone, it's going to get letterbox anyway. That's why I never really cared whether it was a hole punch or nothing because all that's cut off. If someone who's watching almost exclusively YouTube content and they have people who are uploading in two to one, I see that being a big problem. And that's a very niche kind of case though. Isn't based, it? based on what I'm seeing from people yeah. talking about on online, it's more, it's more prevalent than I think you and I think. I think the way that Apple have done the dynamic Island is generally a step forward, right? Because before that mm -hmm. notch was just dead space. And now there are things you can do. I like the ability to, you know, have my music up there. There's neat things they're doing there. I agree. It's not fully fleshed out, but it comes back to sort of my initial point of the, like the 13 pro was essentially the 
perfect device, right? They had yeah. taken all their ideas, the notch, face ID, all the stuff, they'd taken it to its logical conclusion. Now they're kind of throwing some of that out with the 14 and they're starting the next wave where I bet two, three years from now, we'll say, oh, this is the version of the dynamic island that is sort of ideal and perfected, but we haven't seen that. I miss my 13. I, in Whoa, fact, do in you fact, really? I missed my 12 mini for the yeah, record. Actually, I for the record. The Walk me through. So you find yourself a week into the iPhone 14 missing the 13. Yeah. Why? What's, so what's wrong with it? It's not like night and day difference. Sure. The battery life has been noticeably worse, even with turning off always on display. Oh, really? Interesting. It's, okay. Like, I'm not the only one who's noticed this. In the like, Most people have said, I'm turning this off because the battery life is so much worse. Yeah. Battery's never been a problem for me, even when I had the, the mini. And... I want to be clear that battery is not a problem. But you notice me, it's a downgrade. I notice a difference. When I would go and lay down in bed, yeah. usually around 11 o'clock at night, um, I, get, I, I, go, I go to bed early. I'm an old man. Same. My routine hasn't changed, but I'd come yeah. home and I maybe have like 30, 40% left on the day. Mm -hmm. But now when I'm going to lay down, I'm having maybe like 20%. My battery is actually saying like, hey, you're going to die soon. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Wait, I didn't phrase, rephrase that one. I didn't phrase that great. <laughs> Let me put it, with the 13, I I stopped scrolling TikTok when I wanted to. Now with the 14, I'm scrolling TikTok. I, I have to end when my phone tells me to end. So what you're saying is the, the iPhone dying. 14 is an improvement and it's helping you live a healthier life. Again, it's not a massive night and day difference. Okay. But okay. like it is, I do think it's a downgrade. And if the, the solution is turn off always on display, well, that's a selling point to the phone. I will say like, the always on display for me is still really disconcerting because it's like, I keep thinking my phone screen is on. I, it is weird to it, me. It, it's, I think it's one of those things where I get the idea that this is something that if I spend enough time, I will get used to, but I'm still in that phase of like, oh, my phone's not locked. Oh no, like I'm like constantly like hitting the power button because I'm not sure is yeah. that always on or not. And the thing is, if you don't like it, you can turn it off right, and it will give like, you some it, battery it, life that, saving. That is the actual, like that is one of the new selling points to a 14 versus like I say a 13. Yeah. So like to say like, oh, just turn off this feature that seems like shortchanging coming back to the battery life i wonder how much the satellite it's not like you're constantly exactly. connected to a satellite but exactly right like it's i wonder if there's like an, you know every once in a while it's pinging an extra Look, like a little bit all i can say is in my limited testing of the iphone 14 which again it's about a week or so as of filming this video i have personally not noticed a real difference but also i have not done like a full travel day like for me the number one battery test is always you know a full travel day waking up early in the morning, going to the airport, flying, yeah. going to hotel. Like that's always the point where I can tell like how solid a battery is. Because honestly, since the 13, the battery on iPhones have been so good that it takes a travel day like that for it yeah. to die. The only real issue I have with the iPhone 14 Pro, personally for me, yeah. is the camera. Now, I know that as of recording this video, again, this might, might change by the time you're actually watching it. There is a bug where like the camera, like, how would you describe it? Like it, it jitters? Clicks. It clicks. It clicks. Like I, I had this happening. I don't know. In third party apps with like Instagram, TikTok, uh, Snapchat, people are reporting that the camera, like the stabilization in the camera was actually like freaking out. But that is being fixed. Apple's announced they're yes, working they, on a patch will be confirmed. out very shortly. And that like the only one that won't be fixed in uh, in this patch coming up is battery, which I still think could be fixed in a a, a software thing for optimization. It's hard to know what the but, real the yeah. battery issue is, but for me, the main difference between the 13 and the 14 is in the ultra wide and in the standard uh, main sensor, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a larger main sensor. You've got a different ultra wide and also they've redone the processing, right? So I'll start with the processing because that's sort of the most straightforward one yep. because they've switched to the photonic engine, which is a completely different way that they're kind of processing images and doing processing earlier in the pipeline. So they're working on the raw images versus when some stuff has been baked in, which they kind of explained to me and it, may, it makes sense. I've noticed that some images definitely on white balance, but especially when it comes to like sharpness and whatnot, seem like they're a little too aggressive. Part of that might be because they've got more megapixels that's just sort of naturally sharper. But to me, it's almost like sometimes images seem a touch over processed, but my bigger issue has been with focus. So here, the way that the focus on any camera works is pretty straightforward. The bigger the sensor you've got, the shallower the depth of field, right? So, I mean, if we look at my angle right here, you can see I'm in focus. Now I'm not because the actual plane of focus is very shallow. We shoot on Sony FX3s, which are big full sensor, full frame sensor cameras, which means that you get that nice shallow depth of field, but the downside is the focus is very thin. Because the sensor is larger on the iPhone, it is by definition just gonna be harder to focus, right? Because a smaller, mm -hmm. shallower area is going to stay sharp when you are you know, tapping or trying to, to take a photo. But to be fair, I've noticed the same problem with a lot of modern Android phones that have very large sensors and just yeah. that if you miss focus, for example, if Matt's shirt's in 
in focus, but his face isn't. You can still get a decent photo, but you'll see his face is just a little bit blurry. Are you saying it's a decent photo because my face is blurry? I am actually saying that. Wow! But that's the thing. Wow! <laughs> the, I don't know how much that this can really be solved. Like, I just think that with the iPhone 14 Pro, for me personally, I am no longer just gonna point and shoot quite so much. I'm actually gonna maybe take a second and tap on a face or tap on a subject Which because I can't quite trust that it's I actually gonna be in focus. I don't like that mentality for a, a phone camera. But on the flip side though, and I will give him credit, the larger sensor does mean that some things like that shallower depth of field and whatnot looks now, nice. I, I've see, where I've seen it be better is like, okay, I've seen a lot of like side-by-side -side tests with like a Samsung or whatever. Yeah. It's like, here's the 10X on the Samsung. Here's- Oh, with the zoom, yeah. The yeah. zoom. For the most part, I've liked iPhone better in those comparisons. Some of that extra sharpening seems to to do well in for like for the iPhone where like you're seeing like pores in people's faces yeah you're getting more detailed that way and it's like a stylistic choice right and that's, that's pure preference like it's I don't it's not like I'm like oh that like the yeah. the Samsung looks like crap it's I like ten like oh I like the way this sharpened a little bit more whatever I want to talk about lightning and USB-C can we just say that lightning sucks and USB-C is better it, that's all I need to say me personally I'm like I don't really care about lightning but last year, it was like really, really noticeable when we started seeing ProRes on the cameras. It's unusable. It is unusable to try to transfer right. gigabytes of footage over a lightning connector. It will and, take forever. And now this year, like, have you seen the file sizes for the 48 megapixel? 70 megabytes yeah. per so photo. So even, like, even if you're not doing ProRes, if you're just doing basic photos, which a lot of people will, that's a really big problem. This is the year I feel like they they sh if like if they were gonna go with USB C at all, they should have. It's gonna be next year, man. I, the Ultra, the iPhone Ultra. Mark my words. Editor's note, Aaron, you can clip this and you can reuse it in 11 months when the iPhone Ultra comes out. Next year, iPhone 15, they will have an Ultra model that will have USB C. So I have a much more wild take. No port. Yeah. With all the European regulation of, oh, we have to be USB-C or we have to do- like, Standardized, yeah. St standardized. And I really hope I'm wrong for on this, for the record, because yeah. I don't I don't think this is good for anyone. But I, I feel like we're going to see a portless iPhone before we see a USB-C one. Portless is possible, but the problem is, is like, okay, so I again, take me for example. The only time I really use the port on my phone, typically is speaking- for, Is for- Wired uh, CarPlay. CarPlay. Which good luck trying yeah. to, oh, am I going to have to use a dongle for yep. that? Like. Yep. Maybe I will. That's going to suck. But like, or all right. charging every once in a while. And this is not me defending Apple for the record. If I'm thinking of like, oh, I'm I'm a company trying to make all the money in the world. I'm going to make my portless iPhone mm -hmm. and then I'm going to make a, MagSa uh, a MagSafe to, uh, to lightning dongle. So now with all the 10 billion iPhones I yeah. sell that year. Everyone's going to spend everyone's that. Gotta, everyone's got to spend that to, to use their uh, existing accessories. Look, it's shitty. Yeah. But I feel like I, I can see it, man. I, I, I can see, see it. it. And I do believe that, uh, that MagSafe does have some rudimentary data it does. Uh, bil ability. Yeah. It's uh, a little like nebulous because they haven't really opened it up. But from some conversations I've had with some accessory companies, there is some level of data you could unlock via that. So let's talk about the eSIM. Yeah. Personally, and I know, again, this is not the most popular opinion on eSIM. I think this is a great move. Woo! Okay. <laughs> yes, it's inconvenient for some people. For almost everyone. I, I don't think it is. Going from iPhone to iPhone is, is super easy. Do I think it sucks right now? Yes. Do I think the move is good long-term? Also, yes. Good or bad, Apple is a trendsetter for the industry. What they do, yeah. everyone else follows. What's gonna happen is Samsung's gonna make a couple of tack ads where they're like, oh, our phones come with SIM trays. And then next year, the, the their phones are not gonna have SIM trays. If all the, all the phone manufacturers stop making trays, that means carriers are gonna have to get on board with it. One misconception is that if you have an eSIM that there's no SIM at all, there actually is, it's just, it's just integrated into the phone. But when you don't have the SIM tray, you open up a lot of possibilities for how you can act, like for how manufacturers can actually stuff components into there. Because unlike what they've done now is that they've removed the SIM on the US iPhone and it's just in blank space. Right, right now, it's, <laughs> right. But now think about it next year when all of them don't have it, that could be an extra 10% battery life. Like that's why I don't like the argument that a lot of people had of just like, oh, well this phone, it's thick enough to have a headphone jack. It's not just the thickness of the jack. Headphone jacks are pretty long. Yeah. And that's a lot of that's a lot of internal space wasted on a sure. headphone jack. So like while, yeah, it sucks 
a lot of people like using headphones. Look at battery sizes over the last year since headphone jacks have gone away. They've gotten a lot bigger, yeah. and that's a big reason for it. My main concern with the eSIM thing is that you're putting more power in the hands of carriers who maybe don't have your best interest at heart all the time, you know, especially when it comes to switching in and out. And obviously, it's not like it's impossible to switch yeah. an eSIM from one to another. But like these systems are Byzantine, they're ancient, they're difficult. And while yes, eSIM works kind of okay, it is really only in the US. And I think there's a reason why only the US iPhones dropped the yeah. SIM tra tray. I think it is gonna be a very long time before carriers all around the world are fully on board with this. You have to get the ball rolling at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's and, like clearly what Apple are doing. Right. They're trying to force right. it through. I, I understand. And, like, I, like, I think it will get better. It, I, I agree that it sucks right now. How many people have said like, oh man, I'm so mad that they got rid of the eSIM. Now I can't put like an international SIM in there. Yep. And then they've never left their hometown. Again, this only affects US phones. But, I want to keep that in mind. Now. Like, you know, like, yes, there's a lot of people who need to have international uh, SIMs, but they can just get an international iPhone. You can go and get the Canadian iPhone, which- There's not enough freedom in that one. Uh, are you on board with my theory that the iPhone 14 is really an iPhone 15? Like, like every no, phone No, but it feels is... especially strong this year. They're like, they tested half the stuff they're gonna put in the iPhone 15, yeah. dropping the SIM card by really, really focusing on the dynamic island, I, I by do, getting the bigger cameras and whatnot. I do agree with you, and that's why I think we need to, to go back to, this is a 13S. I liked that naming structure better. Aren't you ready though for the iPhone next year to have a camera bump that looks like a pixel? I'm telling you, it's gonna happen. Where else are they gonna put that uh, that Periscope it's camera? It's gonna be the whole big thing. It's, it's gonna be, be a whole big thing. Whole but thing. you know what? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you have made it to this point in the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel because when we hit 400,000 subscribers, the This Is Crew is throwing a pizza party. Wow. You won't be invited, but I, just know that the This Is Crew is very excited for the pizza party, right Kenzie? Yes. See, don't you wanna make Kenzie happy? Subscribe to the channel.